We are talking with Dr. Ryan Abushan of Novant Health for Scythe Pediatrics. That's in Summerfield. He's answering your questions as well. You'll see the number that comes on the bottom of the screen for you to give your questions by text. All right, so a couple of questions we have. Uh, what do you do about a bad bruise? Yeah, bad bruises you can typically treat at home. Um, we would say you can use a warm, a warm compress or ice, whichever feels better. Or if the pain is severe, you can treat with uh, Tylenol or ibuprofen. But there's like no magic cream or anything to get a bruise to go away or anything like that. Correct. Okay. Yeah, and some, in fact, some bruises, if they're pretty deep, involving the, the muscle, can get quite large. We call a hematoma, and it can take several, sometimes take several weeks to go away. Okay. If you have a single red spot on your leg that might be from a bug, but you don't know if the bug actually bit you or not, when should you have it checked? And what kind of doctor do you see? You could start with your primary care doctor. If it's not bothering you, it's not painful or itchy and you feel well, that's something you can certainly treat at home. Um, if it's itchy, you can apply a topical steroid like hydrocortisone cream. If, it's, if you're not sure what it is, call the office. We have, most offices have wonderful triage nurses that can guide you if it's something that can be treated at home or you need to come in for. Yeah, that get, lends me to the next question, which is like a spider bite. So a lot of times people know like a spider bit them, but they don't know what kind of spider it was. So how do they know if it's a spider bite that they really need to be paying attention to? Well, if they if they found, if they think, feel confident it was from a brown recluse or a black widow, those should be evaluated because they can be quite dangerous. Uh, but most spider bites are harmless and um, can be treated similar to uh, other bites and stings like mosquito bites and ant bites. Um, treating pain and itch, watching for, for signs of secondary infection. How do you know maybe if you didn't see the brown recluse or whatever, what kind of things should you see on your skin that there might be an, an issue? Yeah, typically a brown recluse uh, bite will look, um, it'll be typically circular and the center will be more pale. Um, and sometimes there's a little blister in the middle that does not fill with pus. Uh, if you see that, you should get that checked out. Okay, gotcha. All right, so this person's asking, should we save the tick for testing if needed? You can save the tick for identification if you're gonna need to go to the doctor's office, um, but we do not recommend testing the tick for disease because um, it, a lot of times the tests are not accurate, maybe misleading, um, and if the, test, if the tick is negative for whatever disease they're testing it for, it does not rule out the possibility of having tick-borne disease. So we, we find that to be an unhelpful unhelpful practice. Okay. If you do find a tick, once you find the tick, we just want to throw it, throw it in the toilet, flush it down, or put it in a little baggie with some uh, rubbing alcohol. Okay. Again, don't use Vaseline. Don't try and burn it. Don't put nail polish right. on it. Don't do those things. We want to get the tick off the skin as soon as possible. So just use a tweezer and kind of gently, steadily pull it up off the skin. Okay. Uh, this person's asking, when should you seek medical attention for a fever in a child? This is a great question. I get asked a lot. Um, children get fevers a lot. And, um, you know, fever is the body's response to typically an infection. Um, and so, um, you know, we, we would typically say that the height of the fever itself is not something to be alarmed about. Uh, unless the child's appearance is worrisome, uh, be it uh, they're super lethargic or they're having trouble breathing or they're dehydrated. The other reason we would be more, we'll be worried and want to see the child in the office if they had several days in a row of fever, more like three to five days, typically that would be worth a call to the doctor's office to see if the child needs to be seen. But we know that we know that the height of the fever alone doesn't uh, predict if, a, if the illness is from a bacteria or a virus because you know, children can fever extremely high with viruses and they just need to be treated at home. And again, call the office. We have wonderful triage nurses. We have providers on call that can answer these questions if your child needs to be seen. All right, this is a total kid question because it doesn't really happen with adults that often. What about if a kid has something up their nose? When do you <laughs> like try and get it out and when do you say, no, we need to go to the doctor? Yeah, what do they say? You can, you can pick your nose and you pick your friends, but you can't pick your friend's nose. Uh, it depends on the age of the child. It depends on what they put in there. If it looks like it, the, the parent can, can snag it and pull it out and, and without causing more harm, then go for it. If it's an older child and you can get them to, to blow their nose and, and push that uh, foreign, foreign object out, then, then go for that. Um, but if, if you're not sure, leave it where it is. Um, pediatricians love pulling things out of kids' noses. It's probably one of the most fun parts of our job. Ew. <laughs> so I'd be happy to see anyone for, a, for a, a foreign object in their nose anytime. Just call me. What are the most common things that kids do that with? Beads. We see beads, uh, all kinds of things, you know, 
anything they get their hands on, they'll, they'll either put in their mouth or, uh, or stick up their nose or put in their ear. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Um, someone wants to know, do I treat stings differently? Like if it's a bee versus a yellow jacket or it's a wasp? You would, about, you would treat those all very similarly because the, the symptoms would be similar, pain and swelling and redness um, early on. And then after, after that subsides, typically the stings are kind of itchy, so you can treat with a topical steroid or an antihistamine like Benadryl. Okay, and is that going to be the same answer for the dealing with irritation after an ant bite? Correct. Okay, so that, that topical cream, all right. We got one minute. This person's wondering, do I need to worry about snake bites that are not venomous? If you're confident that the the snake is not venomous, you should be okay. Treat the bite uh, with, uh, you clean it with soap, mild soap and water. And again, anytime we have disruption of the skin, whether it's a cut, a sting, a bite, um, we want to keep a close eye out for any signs of secondary infection. So spreading redness, uh, worsening swelling or pain, yellow drainage, new fever. These would be things that call the office about. Gotcha. Okay. Well, we we answered a whole host of random summer injury questions. Thank you, doctor. Yeah. We appreciate your time and your expertise. Yes. If you guys missed any of this, it is going to be in the two wants to know section of our website.